if we are leveraging righteousness and holiness and the name of God to gain things for ourselves and to appear a certain way or to appear better than other people, yep. we're missing the mark. Hello, 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 ladies and gents. My name is Kirby Kelly, and welcome to this week's episode of the Bought and Beloved Podcast. As always, it's your girl, Kirby Kelly, back at it again. Not only with a good word from the word, because we are going to be talking about the word, what scripture says about what our topic is today. I mean, if you're reading the title, you know what it is that we're talking about today. And I say we and we're because I have a guest with me, my good friend, Josh Benson, a.k.a. Church Chat. What up? Josh. Oh, it's good to be here, Kirby. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I've been wanting to make this happen for like ever. And so yeah. thank you for taking the time to just be here. For sure. Yeah. I mean, we live so far apart. It was, it was so difficult making the trek. To I know. I can't believe house, you literally swam. Two miles running in the snow uphill. But I'm here. I know. I'm ready to go. It's amazing. We literally live like right by each other. <laughs> we, we're we we're kind of like navies. So, I know, you know, little navy babies. We love it. You and my husband are like besties. Y'all mm-hmm. hang out all the time. Yeah, yeah. So this place is common to me. It's like it's like my second home. You know, whenever Sydney kicks me out of the house, I'm just Stop. always happy to come hang with Rich. That does not happen. <laughs> but how about uh, for those of you guys, the listeners uh, who don't know Josh? Josh, how about you just let everybody know a little bit about who yeah. you are, what you do, what you're passionate about. All the good things that is Josh Benson. For sure. Yep. So Josh Benson. Um, I am a husband. I married my wife last year uh, in April, uh, Sydney Pritchard Benson. Um, I am passionate about Christian culture and Jesus, and I make content around that. You've probably seen, or maybe your your viewers have seen church chat or maybe some of my TikToks, but it's usually humorous, uh, mm-hmm. but at the same time trying to kind of poke fun at serious things, right? Uh, in, in Christian culture that I think that a lot of Christians kind of look at that's like, hey, that's kind of off, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of what I like to do on the side is just make some cutesy little videos, but with a meaning and, yeah. and make them funny, but really kind of make them hit home for people. Yeah, I think it's really cool how you do a really good job of like delivering things in like a satirical way and a comedic Thank way. You. And I've even seen like in the comment section of your videos, people just being like, oh my gosh, like this is so how Christian culture can be. Mm -hmm. And then there are some people who are like, oh my gosh, this is so how Christian culture can be. But then you like respond with grace to a lot of those comments of just being like, hey, like I actually am a Christian, like making these videos and this is like the heart behind it. And you explain these issues or you explain these things that we see in Christian culture that sometimes can either be cringy or can be problematic or are just like how it can be sometimes. (laughs) So like what kind of got you started with video content or even just like picking that direction to go towards with your content? For sure. I mean, it was COVID. COVID hits. I was locked up in my house and uh, a practice that a couple of buddies of mine and I did in college is we would make fun of each other by like sending videos in person to each other. And so in true COVID form, I made one of my buddy and, you know, he was the the worship leader with the beanie on, you know. And, and so I was like, oh, this is kind of funny. I'll just post it on TikTok and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Wake up and it like blew up overnight. Oh, dang. And that same buddy texted me and he was like, first of all, you know, I hate that you made that of me. But then secondly, <laughs> he was like, don't let this be it. He's like, there's people in Wyoming. There's people in Florida that are like, oh, yeah, that guy's in our church, too. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dang, there's like really a culture and, and usually it's within dating, but other times it, there's other areas. It's like where we really haven't addressed like anything, like yeah. a lot of uh, maybe Christians. I don't know if there was like, you know, silence on it or if it's just kind of like not knowing, but it was a lot of like, mm-hmm. we haven't really addressed kind of how maybe toxic things can be at times. And mm-hmm. I say that kind of with dating in mind, but kind of like what you're saying, like problematic things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's kind of like, hey, we need to set the record straight because there are people on social media that are like, this is how all Christians are. And it's like, I'd prefer yeah. that we, you know, they hear it from like one of us. It's like, hey, it's not the no. case. <laughs> it's kind of wild, but it's like not the case. And this is what true biblical Christianity is. So that's kind of where it got started and kind of like the motive behind it, you know? That's super cool. Did you ever kind of like see it developing into like what it is now? No, not at all. No, I, I was just doing it for funsies. I thought it was hilarious. And I would send it to my buddies like, you know, this one's you or hey, this one's actually me from yeah. college, you know, and it just kept going and going. 
to the point where I was like, there kind of is something here. And so like just kind of kept it and ran with it, but never saw it being this, this much. And through that, you kind of developed this like persona that is iconic <laughs> on TikTok. Uh, that's Church Chad. So maybe explain to the listeners and to the viewers who or what a church Chad mm -hmm. is. And maybe yep, yep. like, I'll just let you take the reins with that one. The church Chad. So I got, I have to give props to, you know, Caleb Huffman and Lacey Abercrombie because yes. they were right there with me and kind of creating that persona, you know, the church Chad guy or the church Chelsea, as we mm -hmm. call the girl. I think it's the person that uses God within Christian culture to have personal gain in dating, right? Like God told me you're my wife. I'm gonna look at the camera. God told me you're my wife, you know, or God's really just laying it on my heart to, you know, do this or that, you know, we should have coffee, we should do that. And they're kind of just leveraging God for people who are like, still trying to figure out their walk, yeah. just for personal gain. Because someone that's like new to Christianity is like, well, God told them that, like, maybe I should like, you know, date this person or like go yeah. out to coffee with them or give them my money for their, you know, whatever. whatever. And so that's kind of the the church chat is really leveraging God for like your own personal gain and really all that entails because it's a lot of different, I guess you could say webs that you can go down where people do that. Yeah. And I feel like it's sad because it's like I, I watch that character and as funny as it is. Not all Christians are like that. Let me of preface course. by saying that. I would say the majority of Christians, not like, like that. Like 99.9% of Christians, I feel like, aren't like that. But there is that like 0.1% where mm -hmm. it's like, buddy, what are you doing? Like in love, like what are what you, are you doing, doing here? And absolutely, that's something that I feel like Christians, especially with like the power of social media, are like starting to recognize. And non-Christians can like, recognize and sadly that puts like a bad name on christianity well, it, it's the the fact of the matter like you think of like i know we're kind of getting off topic but it's kind of like okay. you look at the news right and maybe you look at like political sides mm -hmm. uh, the news that sells and gets the most traction is displaying the most radical of either side right yeah. we're never going to show you the the rational people on either side we're going to show you the crit mm -hmm. and in the same manner i feel as though it's the the one percent of maybe christians or people in our churches that are just off the rocker and acting crazy. And those are the people that now as Christians, we have to be like, hey, their video blew up because it was like cringy and like out of context. Or like, like heretical. Her literally heretical. And it's yeah. like, well, now we, like, I feel the need. Now we have to come and like, I have try to address and this and be up. like, hey guys, like, that's not what Jesus is. That's not what biblical Christianity is. So yeah. it's not even close to the majority of people, but like sometimes I feel like they're the loudest. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Dang, sometimes I feel like, which I've always, I flashback, I kind of struggle with narcissism, if you can believe that. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, maybe I need to be the loudest. And God's like, no, maybe not. But like, yeah. at the same time, it's kind of this thing of like, you know, trying to like have accountability there. Mm -hmm. But also then for me, like, I don't need to be the loudest. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but yeah, for sure. It's like picking and choosing when to address something too. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. is this something that I want to get like, sucked into and then it become like a whole thing or right i don't know i feel like i've been in that boat too where i haven't really like been like dragged into a situation where it's like oh i need to address this thing but it's like i've been tagged in videos where it's like this person is saying this or people have commented on my stuff well all of you christians are like this and i'm like well why do you mm -hmm. think that and then i find out kind of like their sources their examples for christianity and i'm like these aren't people that are truly showcasing the heart of christ um and it even makes me think of like the Pharisees kind of like, if we're backing up to like what scripture says, mm -hmm. maybe not every Pharisee was like a modern day church, Chad, but I feel like it's almost in the same vein of things where it's like these people were leveraging God or like boasting in mm -hmm. the fact that they were so righteous and so godly and all of these things. But it's like when you actually look at their roots and their fruit, there's no substance to it. Right. And like, that's a real issue. I'm not saying that's like the most prevalent issue in the church. I don't think that that is the most prevalent, mm -hmm. but I think that it gets the most attention based off of like how things trend and how things grab attention and go viral. It's like, yeah. those are the people that get attention. And it's like, yeah, we need to be addressing those things in love and like calling out our brothers and sisters in the right way that scripture tells us to. But like, right. that's something that we need to be careful of that like God is not someone to be leveraged for our own personal gain, our fame in right. the dating world, whatever. It's like, 
we cannot manipulate and twist scripture or God because it's like we're called to be ambassadors. Like we're supposed to be the people showcasing who God is, even though we're imperfect. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. It's just like that kind of reminds me of, of the Pharisees with how they oh, like, yeah. live their life. Big time. It, it, it's literally, I mean, you look back and, and it's even then beyond that, taking things that aren't biblical, mm-hmm. um, but then, you know, maybe it's a personal conviction and thrusting it upon someone of saying like, oh, well, you know, if you do this, then, you know, you need to repent or you need yeah. to do that. And, and like it's just you aren't really saved if you do this one thing and it's like, you know, well. If you celebrate Halloween, then you just, you know, need to really repent because you're lukewarm. You know, I saw a video like that. And it's like, you look at the family of three that the guy's got like, you know, a couple of kids. He's like, well, my kid dressed up as Spider-Man, you know, do yeah. I need to go repent? And, and it, that's even more down, I, I feel like the Pharisee type uh, line of things is just really looking at. I guess, like, what are your, your motives behind that? And I yeah. think a lot of people would do that so that they can kind of pat themselves on the back and say, hey, like, look at me. I'm I didn't celebrate Halloween one. this year. You know, I'm so. Yeah. And I was, like, literally reading Romans today, and it's like, your your works are, like, so dead, you know? And so mm-hmm. it's, like, trying to be valiant, and, and that is just a, mm-hmm. a, a mute point at that point. Yeah. I think there's a proper way for us to even address those things. It's, like, if that yeah. truly is, like, someone's conviction or if someone has... A genuine conviction on anything i don't think the solution especially nowadays is to just go on social media and completely drag a person yeah. like we have forgotten that in the gospels jesus instructs us to go to that person and to confront them with the thing that we might see as an issue and a lot of the time it's like if we just talk to somebody and like either hear their heart or their reasoning for what they're doing, whether they're in the wrong or whether it's like, oh, maybe I just looked into this in a wrong way or whatever. It's like we've lost the art of actually dialoguing and holding each other accountable. It's like we're not holding each other accountable. We're crucifying each other. (laughs) Like it's just we skip accountability or misinterpret accountability and turn it to something completely different. And it's like, well, no wonder people are so unattracted to Christianity because it's like, we don't look like a unified people. Right. We don't look like a people who showcases this love that we so-called call to preach, you right. know? Yeah. And, and when I think of accountability, like, I think of, like, your church and the people that you, this is such a Christian phrase, do life with. It's true, yeah, But it's true. Like, it's literally, yeah. the, when I think of that, it, it, I think of someone that I have, like, a relationship with. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, my wife, you know, I mean, Richard, like, literally, like, call yeah. me out. And so it's difficult when... Again, someone who maybe like a church chat and maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, they don't have like that consistent community. It's kind of like there needs to be like accountability here, but you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. You don't need to just drag someone through the mud for maybe like misspeaking and trying to push personal convictions on other people. And so it it is kind of a weird gray area of like there should be accountability, Mm -hmm. but this person might not even be involved in a church. Mm -hmm. Do they have accountability? You know, so kind of like a. A weird spot to navigate right now and that's why we need to be people who pursue relationship with mm-hmm. one another because it's like i don't it, it's hard to be able to like speak into someone's life if you don't know that person's heart 100 you know like i know even with me there were times i won't get into the specifics of it but i remember this one girl just like completely I, I posted a story talking about like an issue that i saw was prevalent and i was like hey we need to draw attention to this thing and they took it out of context and it was like so you don't care about this specific thing that's happening then? And it just, she took it from zero to 100 real quick. Yeah. And so rather than like lashing back in the comments, I DM'd her and I was like, hey, actually, this is something I do care about. And I volunteered with and I've put my money towards and my time towards and yada, 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 yada. Yeah. And I encourage you, you know, to not make assumptions like that. Or if you do have assumptions to bring it to someone or if you're passionate about an issue, sees being the person to pioneer change in that way yeah and i'm just like i've had so many conversations like that where it's like i i know that we as christians really need to be good at initiating conversations because it isn't just something that you know the atheists do and the this do and the that do whatever the non-believers do but it's like christians are very guilty of this too of oh, just yeah. being the first person to like throw people off the bus, off the boat. Yeah. And there's a, so it's funny you mentioned that, like in mm-hmm. that example, I don't remember the Latin term for it, 
but there's a term for what you just mentioned. And it's basically where it's kind of an argumentative tactic where you take something that someone says Mm -hmm. to its furthest, most extreme conclusion. Yeah. And I feel like, I think the internet's just trained everybody to like argue like that. Literally. And so it's, you know, literally going, I, I think I saw one on like Twitter and this is just a funny example. It was like a guy tweeting, I like bananas. And the first response was, what you actually mean is that you support, you know, the genocide of people in like Caribbean countries or whatever. Oh my God. And, and so that's a very extreme version of yeah. it, but it's literally kind of an argumentative way now that I see kind of with Christianity. It's like, yeah. you know, if you say, you know, an interpretation of scripture, well, actually what you're, what you're saying is that you support this. It's like, no, like I'm saying what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, that's a whole other can of worms of, yeah, literally. <laughs> hey, let's rein it in and not take anything Christian or atheists say Mm -hmm. to its furthest conclusion, Mm -hmm. because I think that when we can drop that kind of veil, we can then be like, okay, now we can actually like have a relationship because I'm not assuming the worst about everyone I speak to ever. Literally. So it's like, even to wrap up this can of worms, like you said, if that's you and you're receiving comments and I don't know, backlash like that, or just attacks like that, where people are completely judging your character based off of one little thing you say, I encourage you to either dismiss it if it's a healthy thing to dismiss or to have like healthy discussion about it and allow people to see your heart in things because people view a three second clip, a five second clip, a 25 minute podcast of you and they don't know the extent to what you believe, why you believe, what you do outside of the things that they see about you or read about you or hear about you. And if that's you commenting those things, um, I encourage you also to hone back on that and to question yourself as to, you know, is what I'm saying appropriate? Is this the most appropriate way to communicate this thing? Because if it's not, there's probably a better way to communicate it and to bring up that issue if that even needs to be brought up, you know? So Definitely. If it is to kind of... Yeah, put a mm-hmm. bow on it. Like you're, you're exactly right. I think that there is a point where you just dismiss it. Mm-hmm. Like if it is kind of just someone you're like, yo, this is like so out of left field, and that's not. Yeah. Like, but kind of to like what you're saying, like if they're, if the masses are outside your your door, and it, there is something that you've said where they're like, or multiple people being like, yeah. hey, this is like heretical, or like whatever. Yeah. It's important to kind of like then introspect and be like, yo, like, am I being whack right now? You know, yeah. do I need to. Um, but yeah, I think there's a healthy balance there, but you're exactly right. I think that it like all comes down to like having relationships with the people. I kind of want to shift gears for this next little bit as we get into maybe the second half of the podcast episode. Um, cause we're kind of talking about Pharisees and mm-hmm. just like Pharisee culture and how that be. And I did want to share some scripture on this and maybe get your thoughts on this as okay. well. Um, and it's in Matthew 23, uh, verses 25 through 28. It's quite a bit, but I'm just going to, I'm going to read it. I could read the whole chapter. Yeah, no, but I just rattle it off. Go ahead. Um, I mean, this is a Christian podcast, so. But this is Jesus talking, and he's talking to the Pharisees. And he says, what sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee. First, wash the inside of the cup in the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly, you look like righteous people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness and he goes on to say Mm. this like again and again and again with all kinds of different examples but basically jesus is talking to this group of pharisees and um they're like washing cups and everything on the outside but the inside wasn't clean and jesus is like you're exactly like this it's Mm -hmm. like you want everything on the outside to appear so good and appear so righteous but on the inside like there has been no inward work within you. And that's where the Holy Spirit is supposed to work within us. Like if we are abiding in God and have a relationship with God, the work happens on the inside. Mm-hmm. And then we see that reflected on the outside with our, with how we behave, with our words, with our actions, our thoughts, our attitudes, all those things. And Jesus is calling out and in, in these you know, they were the religious people of that day. So knowing that this was towards the religious people, the Jews, we can we can shift this to talking about Christians. Yeah. Since that's who we're talking about here and talking to here. That 
we really need to take a check in our heart and step back and be like, am I being inwardly purified and made right with God? Because again, like we were saying in the beginning, if we are leveraging righteousness and holiness and the name of God to gain things for ourselves and to appear a certain way or to appear better than other people, we're missing the mark. Oh yeah. And that's literally, I feel like you throw it back 20 years ago, that verse is like applicable to like church staff or Mm -hmm. someone who is a Christian that has like a a notable public figure status, right? Mm -hmm. Not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, It's literally like anyone with a platform more or less. And there are a ton of people now with like platforms. And it comes down to like literally seeing people leverage. I guess this would also be like a Chad or Chelsea move is like leveraging God for like your, your platform. Like I want to be a Christian influencer leveraging this following that I've gained because I'm a Christian influencer using it. And I guess this would fall under the, a uh, veil of greed, but it's just like, yeah. let me leverage my platform. You know, I'm a teacher. Let me, you know, post cool little quotesy things. And then like, also mm-hmm. give me your money so that I can like, you know, for this noble cause. And, and yeah. it's just stuff like that, that I don't know, man, like that's gotta be cleaned up. I it, mean, it makes me think of Jesus literally flipping the tables in the temple. It's literally. like, what are you doing here? It's like so outrageous. Yeah. And, and, and like people can spot authenticity a mile away. Yeah. And so it's kind of just like, from a, again, a Christian standpoint, it's like Christians are not like people see what we're doing. You know, they might not like it. They might not hate it. They might be indifferent to it, but they still see it. And if we don't go about things the right way, kind of like what you're saying, if you're not like clean on the inside and you're just spouting out like, honestly, like crappy fruit, like people can spot it. And it's, it's something that like, we've got to clean up. I do believe that even to people maybe who are identifying with this Pharisee of like, I am literally the worst of the worst. I have used Jesus for my own fame and name yeah, and yeah. gain and all these things. And like, what what good could come from this for me? Like, I even think about Nicodemus was a Pharisee and he ended up following Jesus. Yeah. It's like, we can all have a heart. Change. Paul, <laughs> Paul was a Pharisee. And like, look at what he did with his life. Um, you know, th- it's a little different in terms of like leveraging the name of God and all that stuff. But I, I think we can look at these people throughout the entire Bible oh, yeah. who have not been the best men and women, who have not been the best people that have represented God. And it's like there is hope and redemption and reconciliation out there extended for everybody. Yeah. But it's like we have to humble ourselves and come to that conclusion of I am a sinner just like me, just like you, just like everybody in existence. It's like, oh yeah, I'm just as broken. And I I need to come to terms and admit this. And I need to, I need to move forward and not just do better, but do life how Christ has called me to do life. Big time. Yeah. Definitely not my, like, I I definitely see like saying that it kind of sounds like I'm on like my house. Like, could you believe No, I know that's not your heart though. For sure. But like, it's literally like, like what you're saying. It's like, we're all like so insanely broken uh, to the point of like that need for a savior. And so like, I feel like someone that maybe that like proverbial light bulb comes on for like whatever sin, like whether it's like, I've been like a Pharisee, I've been like struggling with this. It's like, that's exla- exactly the, the redemption story that uh, like Jesus came to create, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. literally just like pulling you from the depths like you're saying, like all the Bible characters we see with like a story like that. So mm-hmm. it's frustrating to see, but at the same time, the the path to redemption is so like clear cut for like everybody. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's not like it's like, can't believe you would be a, a Christian influencer. You look like a Pharisee. It's like, hey, like there are, I feel like souls on the line of like people mm-hmm. and, and like all it takes is like one step in the right direction and like, mm-hmm. like we're back at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like myself included, like there's times when like I literally have to like I have people that hold me accountable for things that I post. And yeah. it's literally like you need to delete that or you can't ever post that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, yeah, I think I mean, and that's that's the hope for all of us is that like we can get to that place where we recognize that within ourselves and we're able to allow for there to be voices of accountability and community in our life because We need that. Like Mm -hmm. we need people. We need to be those people first and foremost that can call people out in love from a place of genuineness Mm -hmm. and sincerity. Talks about that in scripture that we need to be sincere in that, uh, in the truth. But 
we also need to have those people in our life to keep us accountable so we're not pursuing things from a place of lawlessness or hypocrisy or fall into uh, impurity in any yeah. way or, or self-indulgence. Like yeah. we need each other because we are so prone to sin. Like it's interesting. We're, we're living in this duality of like sinner and saint. And it's this wrestle of like, I am, I am made new in Christ and I'm called to represent him and to do life with him. But yeah. I'm still so human at the same time. Oh my gosh. And yeah. we need to recognize that within each other. Even the people that like we're seeing online, the church chads or the Chelsea's or whatever. And it's like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. Or the straight up heretics, bro, what are you doing? It's like, there's a way to address those things. But we also, we also need to take a step back and recognize like, they're also broken humanity, just like me. Yep. And I need to approach this in the way that Christ has called me to approach it. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I haven't been a super big fan of like the, I feel like it's like cancel culture, but I've seen it like specifically with like Christians, you know yes. what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, I, I try to make uh, my humor as lighthearted as possible because I never want to like, I never I'm not wanna, saying that. No, no, no. But I definitely like, I think that there's also a side that's like, you know, how could they, this Christian do this? They do not deserve them. And it's at the same time, you know, the flip side of it is like, we're all broken. Yes. You know, if you're expecting, you know, perfection from a Christian influencer, from a pastor, you know, what have you, you're going to be disappointed. And mm -hmm. that comes down to like, where are you putting your faith? Like, is it in like these people that show amazing little snippets of their life that seem perfect or is it like actually like rooted in Christ? Right. And so, their Bible study where they set up their camera and it's like, like I woke up at 5 a.m. <laughs> Well, I'm highlighting everything. It's also <laughs> like, that's me. Yeah. So I can say that that's literally me, but, but I don't know. I think we all just need to come to that humble place of that's me. That can be, no, it's, it's literally a place of humility that says, I, I, I can hear you whenever you bring something to me for accountability. Um, and, and, and I will never cancel someone for something that I might bring them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'll never hold this against you. That's and that's, that's really I think, an equally discouraging side of it is, you know, sure, we like we kind of put fun, mm -hmm. but then it's also like, hey, just because they did this or they misspoke mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think that we cancel them. And now we like, you know, regurgitate them out of Especially society. if they're like in error and it's not just straight up heresy. Like, I think there is yeah. that even that that defining line of like there are, I've seen Christians in error. And I'm not going to mm -hmm. completely cancel them from being an error because they're willing to learn the truth in that. That's the big thing. Them coming and saying, hey, I right? was an error. And, and like, it's like, no, amazing. Like, like, like we're all Me too. We're all growing. It's like, yeah. from what I first understood Christianity to be when I was 14 years old, just like in reading scripture for myself with no context, no commentary, nothing. Yeah. It's like my theology has developed over time through trusted sources and, and my studies and school and all that stuff. And I think there is, like I said, a fine line between someone being in error and us knowing the difference with that and someone yeah. being heretical. And it's like, okay, you, you clearly are not a Christian then if you are ascribing to such heresy, heresy, heresy. It's like, yeah. do, you, do you have the you know, main foundation of Christianity in your life, like the main beliefs? Like, that's another topic for another day. But there's another guest. There's another guest for that. <laughs> Um, maybe Abercrombie uh, likes it. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I don't know. It's just, that's just something I also want to say out there that like, I'm not saying that someone out there preaching heresy, we should just be like, they're fine. That's okay. There's a way to address those things, but we need to be discerning of someone who might be genuine in their faith. Who's just in error versus some 14 year old in their room who wants to talk about Jesus and calling them a heretic <laughs> you know what i mean exactly. like take what exactly. i'm saying with a grain of salt as i explain this everyone listening but it's yeah it's such a fine line it's kind of like at least for me like my journey with christ mm -hmm. you know when you like walk out of a movie theater and you can like barely yeah. see anything and you're like you know and then your eyes adjust and there's just so much more so much more that's what it's been like and for me it's to the point where it feels overwhelming at times it's just like there's so much to this there's so much to mm -hmm. this that that a year ago I couldn't have fathomed or two yeah. years ago and so as I just like slowly like try to make progress against this just like ever expanding realization of like 
how much there is to like Christ, Christ mm-hmm. and, and our belief system. I always, uh, I always come back on like, we just need to have like grace for each other. And I'm first, like so. truly like, of course, like, you know, hey, dude, like you're good, like accountability, blah, blah, blah. Like you're saying, of course, if there's like heresy involved, yo, that's not remotely what we believe. But I, I think that's the more and more that I get out out of the movie theater and now I can like see the, the McDonald's that's like five miles away. I'm just like, Holy cow, there's so much here. Uh, it's, it's just kind of coming back on that of like people make TikTok TikToks about me and like dumb things I say. And it's like, I get it. And it's like, sometimes I'll make TikToks about some other dumb thing. And it's like, I just hope they get it because it's kind of humorous at times, but it's like, there's like so much grace there, at least from my end. It's like, Welcome to the club. You're broken. Good job. <laughs> I think that's the perfect way the perfect that we can begin to wrap up this episode. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> if you're here and you're listening, you're probably broken just like the rest of us. If you yep. are a Pharisee and feel that conviction of, I've been just doing things to look like a Christian, but on the inside, I am dying. <laughs> like, we've all been there and there's, there's hope for each and every single one of us, but we have to get to that place of humility and willingness to repent and have accountability to move forward from that place. And we also need to approach those people um, with grace as well. So are there any last comments or thoughts or encouragements that you want to leave with anyone? It could be on this topic. It could be just anything that is on your heart. Uh, Something that's on my heart. um, If you're like dating someone and you go out to like a restaurant, you should not sit on the same side of them if, if it's just you two. You need to sit across from your Me and Richard do that. That's just been Richard really... You'll sit next to each other? Sometimes. Do, do, you, do you like put your arm around yeah, each other? like hold hands or like if we're sharing food together. I'm a passionate sit acrosser. <gasps> I think that... But then it's like, what if it's like booths, like a booth oh, yeah. and chairs? We both want the booth. Sit, sit across. Someone someone has to take the chair. Dang. That, that is my passionate hill to die on. So am I... Are you calling me I'm trying to hold you guys love. accountable right now. <laughs> Wow, that could be your next video, honestly. Hey, like God just told me that, just told me that you're like, wrong. You're totally wrong for you're how you so, <laughs> go um, on a date. You're actually a heretic for doing this, so. <laughs> they actually like reclined at the table, so you sitting on this booth is actually. Have oh, you heard of the festival were, of booths? They were being horizontal on the booth. That's not wow. good. Wow. Get vertical instantly. You need to be married before you. <laughs> Anyways. Um, thank you so much for taking the time yeah, to for me. swim, drive, fly mm-hmm. 10 All minutes three. over here. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. For sure. uh, where can people check you out and follow your content and see what you're up to? Uh, TikTok, Josh Benson, the rapper, um, Insta church, Chad, um, YouTube now church, Chad, just oh, nice. look us up. We're all over the place. All the Chads everywhere. All the Chads. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for being here again. I appreciate it so much. And to all of you who tuned in, thank you. I really hope that this podcast amidst, you know, the depths to what we were talking about and the craziness to the jokes that we were making. I really hope that it spoke to you and to each and every single person that's listening today. And if there is a podcast episode that you want to hear, a topic that you want to hear talked about or a guest that you want to see, feel free to either comment down below if you're watching the YouTube segment, which goes live on Tuesdays, um, or if you're just listening to our Wednesday audio drops, you can go to botandbeloved at gmail.com, bot a n d beloved at gmail.com, and you can shoot me an email with anything that you have in mind, whether it's a topic, a video, a person you want on, all the good stuff. But until next time, I love you guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.